We few, we happy few, we band of non-gender specific brothers. For who today that walks with me shall be my brother, be he ne'er so base, this Camino shall gentle his condition. And Englishmen now abed will think themselves a curse they were not here when any speaks of walking Camino with us. That's a sort of a terrible, terrible miswriting of uh, Shakespeare's Henry V battle speech. <laughs> so sorry. Hi. El Camino de Santiago, one of the most ancient pilgrimages around the world. When I was five, my father walked the Camino and he told me what a remarkable experience it was for him. In 2018 in Lone, the Pilgrim's Office registered more than 330,000 walkers. But what would drive so many to go through incredible lengths? To discover that I would cross more than 900 kilometers across Spain. The journey would take me 32 days or a total of 1,100,610 steps. There were only two questions I needed answers for. Who are the pilgrims? And why do they walk? This, what you're doing here right now is not like uh, how, how much time can we spend here because because i don't know how long your movie will be what got him going was you said this was the reason i started in st john please keep on you watched the way you watched the way i watched the way and this is you said this is the reason i started in st john that's the reason and i watched the way um i was i was on a plane from frankfurt to boston so oh, there's the camera so so from Frankfurt to Boston, I was sitting in business class, what I usually don't do, but this was, you know, you had this this screen in front and I watched this and it was so amazing because uh, I know I know all the all the Sheen family from 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 very different movies and it was so amazing how uh, Martin Sheen changed in his role and he was walking on the way and uh, the moment he started in St. Jean Peter Bourne and crossed the bridge, that was so amazing that for me was totally clear. Whenever I do the Camino, I will start exactly there. Even if I'm just three weeks and won't reach Santiago this time, hopefully next time, uh, I didn't cut it the entire tour. So this is for me a starting point and I was perfect. Os primeiros passos para fora da cidadela de Saint Jean Pierre Po aqui no sul da França, rumo aos Montes Pirineus. At that point, I still had no idea of the adventure that was about to come. Je me sentais libre et je me sentais en vie, vivante en fait. Je me sentais vivante à ce moment-là. Je me disais que c'était incroyable de marcher, marcher, d'être tout le temps dehors et d'avoir un, vraiment un rythme vraiment lent. Et je me sentais... En fait, je me sentais heureuse en fait. Je me sentais juste heureuse. Je sais pas de réaliser ça, ça m'a ça émue en fait, ça m'a touchée. Mais je me disais que c'était incroyable d'avoir la chance, d'avoir le temps et, et que c'était un cadeau que je me faisais en fait d'avoir arrêté de travailler pendant un an pour vraiment euh, être, être libre d'écouter ce qui se passe et, et ce qui sonne juste quoi. Donc c'était... Moi ouais, je pense que c'était juste de réaliser aussi la beauté de, de, de ce qu'il y a autour de nous et, et euh, 
euh, et parfois ça fait quelque chose d'être tout seul en fait tout seul tu regardes partout c'est immense et toi tu traverses ça depuis des, des kilomètres et des kilomètres et euh, Your third? Yes. Okay, so yeah. you thought, so why are you coming back? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> there is something about this that just pulls you back. And after you've done one, you say, I'll never do this again. But, um, but we have. So there's just something about coming and doing this walk that uh, we enjoy. Um, it's just completely different to what we're used to in New Zealand. It's a whole different way of life. I like the exercise. I enjoy, enjoy walking, it's easy. Um, it's a good place to think in our mind. Was there more to it than what meet the eye? I'm searching for my, my passion here. Uh, for peace. For peace. It's a sense of freedom. It's really not even where you're going. It's just how you're going. I heard many stories about this. You have in the back a little home. I can think when I'm walking, even at home. If I really need to think, I need to clear the space. It's gratifying, isn't it, to know that your feet can carry you 500 miles? I would stare at the white wall if I need to take some important decision for a long time without any distractions. just how different it was going to be that I wasn't prepared. The first time I came, I wasn't prepared for the difference sitting at home to actually walking every day for 20 to 30 kilometres. Whereas now, I, I love, I embrace that. That's why we do it. Uh, and it's going to test you too. It's not a holiday as such. You know, it's, you've got good days, you have bad days on the Camino. The bad days are when you're tired and your feet are hurting and yeah, and then you get to the end and you can't find somewhere to stay or, or eat or something. The good days are meeting people like yourselves and uh, the weather, just experiencing other people along the way. Well, it's a, it's a real adventure and I have no idea what will expect me. Um, Well, after the fourth day, uh, I can say uh, uh, what I know up to now is the way makes you happy. Uh, it's not it's not that I can laugh all day. Today was really different. Um, I was walking, and for the first time, I I felt like I need some time on my own. So, so I was walking the entire day, and that was different from from the first three days where we were walking the group and talking a lot. And uh, this morning, I felt like, well, I have to leave this group because I need some time on my own. And, um, this was amazing just just uh, to see uh, to watch the sun and to watch to watch well it's it's, it's springtime so uh, everything is growing and then you hear the birds and you have just this peace and, and then quiet is around you so so it's it's it has been an amazing day so I'm not sure what will happen the next day and I have no expectations what will happen. It's just, I have a plan, uh, and, and, and the way is given. It's, yeah, so, so we'll see. And as I followed the yellow arrows, there were no shortage of people who were a true inspiration. Moi, je suis Mona de Bretagne. J'ai 79 ans. C'est la sixième fois que je fais le chemin jusqu'au bout. 
Hein, je suis déjà allée donc cinq fois à, à Santiago. Et là, cette année, c'est la sixième. Ah si, la première fois, c'est c'est la découverte, hein. c'est formidable. La deuxième aussi, troisième aussi. Maintenant, c'est c'est dur. C'est dur. <rire> Maintenant, c'est dur. Voilà. C'est quand même un effort physique qui est qui est dur. Euh, le plaisir que j'ai, euh, c'est le soir de rencontrer des gens. Tous les jours, on rencontre quelqu'un de gentil. Hein voilà, et ça c'est agréable. Talk to me. Talk to you. David. My name is David. I am a Camino addict. I, I did the Camino from Moissac in France to, Saint -Jean, uh, to uh, Santiago in the year 5, 2005. Uh, my background is I have a degree in religions and theology, and I'm quite romantic about the whole thing. I'm uh, also a very good heretic as well. They would have burnt me a few hundred years ago. I couldn't believe that there were no monks or friars or nuns doing first aid or helping people. So the next year I came back, and I've been coming back for 13 years now, twice a year doing first aid. Sometimes I walk, and uh, sometimes I come in, a, in the smallest camper in the world, made out of a Citroen Berlingo. The camper works better because uh, I get to rescue people and take them to hospitals or here or there or whatever. Yeah. But I had this first aid sign made. Well, I didn't have it made, I made it. But I used uh, Google Translator to get first aid in a number of okay. different languages. Okay. But for all I know, that says your sister has a moustache. I mean, I have... <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, yes, your donkey is better looking than you. I have no idea what it really says. I'm just assuming it says first aid in a number of languages. I had an unexpected dinner with David, Michael, and Mona. And the more I walked, the more I realized people are kind. And we would be willing to help each other whenever we could. What's up? <laughs> yes. Among breathtaking nature, somehow we managed to keep the spirits high. Cheers! Buen camino. Buen camino. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> and oh, yes. How is the wine? Very good. Korea say, goodness. Impressive. But you see how little I've taken. There he is. St. James. What you should really do is have that camouflage as I don't know, it's all a bunch of flowers. <laughs> <laughs> but it is less intimidating than I think. No, it's absolutely. I mean, the weird thing about it is, is that one ignores it. It's as if it's not there. But it's really cool rather than that. And then somebody with a Sennheiser or Venir a hacerlo, tengo como cinco años planeando y planeando y planeando y siempre hay cosas por las que uno no lo hace. Si uno espera a que todo esté perfecto, nunca lo vas a hacer. Es fantástico ver tanta gente con tantos problemas de andar y aquí están caminando. 
Y ayer yo preguntaba, ¿y los que sí pueden caminar, dónde están? Tengo una hija que le gusta mucho caminar. Ella siempre me dice, no te rajes, no te rajes. <ríe> siempre para adelante. Esté como esté la situación, siempre adelante. No te rajes, no te rajes. Es como la madera cuando se quiebra y se raja, hace ranuras, cuando la madera se vence, resistir. After your shoe soles wear off, so do your assumptions about meaning. The first of them to erode. Time. Relative. And absolute. Hours feel like days. Days feel like weeks. A part of you wonders if you're not lost in the realms of history. The more distance you put behind, the more sunsets tend to last. No sé, capaz que perdemos tres horas en la computadora que no nos dimos cuenta. Y bueno, y son tres horas que se nos fueron sin hacer lo que realmente teníamos ganas de hacer. Y acá solamente es caminar, disfrutar del paisaje, respirar. Y ahí parece que el tiempo no pasa. Y estamos haciendo algo que queremos. Así que bueno, capaz que es cuestión de hacer solamente cosas que queremos. Dedicarnos a hacer cosas que queremos para que el tiempo dure más. parce que tu marches et d'ailleurs en Espagne parfois on marche à côté d'une énorme autoroute avec les voitures et les, les, et les, les poids lourds à toute vitesse et en fait je trouve ça intéressant parce que tu vois le contraste entre bah, nous qui marchons à pied euh, voilà tout doucement et, et les voitures qui passent à, à fond et du coup euh, tu te rends compte vraiment de Bah, comment, tu, ouais, comment tu ralentis J'ai une devise qui s'appelle Carpe Diem. Do you know Carpe diem, ça veut dire « cueille le jour »,« prends le temps chaque jour ». Et euh, à côté de ma vie euh, encore fort active, ici, j'ai le temps. Je n'ai pas de, de, de rendez-vous, euh, je n'ai pas d'échéance. Le calme, c'est vraiment ça. Se retrouver. Se retrouver et euh, prendre le temps. Rencontrer des gens. Voilà, vivre. On ne sait pas ce que dans 10 ans ou dans 15 ans, ce, qu sera, ce que je serai.
C'est une belle expérience de rencontre avec des gens de, de toute la Terre. Euh, pas nécessairement pour un motif religieux, une certaine spiritualité, euh, mais c'est surtout pour euh, rencontrer d'autres personnes. Et c'est pour ça que je marche seul. Parce que quand tu marches seul, tu es plus, tu as plus facile à entrer en, en contact. Si tu es un groupe, tu restes en groupe. Ici, euh, voilà, je parle avec toi, c'est super. C'est pas ma première marche, mais c'est ma première très longue marche et c'est surtout ma première marche toute seule. Toute seule pour vraiment être libre, vraiment être libre de, de suivre le chemin comme j'ai envie, de m'arrêter si j'ai envie de m'arrêter, de marcher vite, lentement, de cueillir des fruits, de prendre des photos, d'être de, libre, euh, libre aussi pour les autres personnes. Parce que quand tu marches tout seul, tu es plus, plus accessible. On vient te rencontrer et euh, t'as pas le choix. Si tu as besoin de quelque chose, tu es obligé d'aller vers les autres. We're also happy at walking in silence together. We don't have to be talking. I can be ahead of her or behind her. It doesn't mm. matter. Mm. Uh, we enjoy our own space, but and then we come together. So we just seem it seems to work for us. Yeah, not a problem. Mm. I mean, we have moments. Yeah. That <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go any further, or yeah. you know, that restaurant, yeah. not that one, but. Um, It's a really good test on a relationship. Um, and if, I think if you can walk the Camino together, you're doing pretty well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you first meet people on the Camino, you start off and you're all nervous and everybody's thinking about how they're going to go. So you don't sort of connect. And then after a couple of days, you're like best friends. <laughs> you know, you, you become a family. They talk about the Camino family and it, And to, to take that home and be a little bit more open to people that we meet for the first time. Being more open is something I definitely had to learn, especially at times when the entire albergue forced you to wake at five in the morning. Décimo segundo dia de caminhada e hoje é um dia frio. A temperatura está mais ou menos os três graus. Só espero que não chova hoje também. Even with language barriers, lentil soup never tasted any better. There's this internal mystery and a lot of people are on Camino because they wake up at two o'clock in the morning and they have no idea what their life is about. They have no idea what they've been doing for the last 48 years or why, why they're living with that person, why they're making cardboard boxes or whatever it is. So they go to find themselves, but they don't really, they go to lose themselves. They go to lose all those connections and all those ties that have stopped them being actually what they are, which is this extraordinary creature. A human is an extraordinary creature. And on Camino, there's no history. Nobody knows who you are. They say that the first third of the Camino is external, it's pain. And then the second third of the Camino is internal, it's mental pain. There's all sorts of things bob up from your past where you go, I can't believe I did that and so on. And it usually ends in tears and so on. And then the third section of your Camino is you're just very calm. And when you go home, you're not the same person. It is everything you have to deal with, you have to deal with. But you can deal with anything. You just walk 500 miles. You can deal with anything. And it changes people. But I think, in a sense, it's not that they're changed already. It's that 
they're ready to come and they don't need to know why they just need to come and if you're listening to this you've just been called <laughs> Yesterday I was working and suddenly I... Oh, I can speak in French, it's better. Okay. Start again. I start again. Um, <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Sometimes I, I start to think in English. I forget I'm French. So... <laughs> Donc, hier. Hier, je marchais. Je marchais. Euh, je suis sortie d'une grosse ville. Je traversais un pont et je regardais sur ma gauche, on voyait des montagnes avec euh, les sommets enneigés. Et je trouvais ça tellement beau. Et en fait, je me suis mis à pleurer. Et je pleurais, je pleurais, mais fort, quoi. J'avais des larmes qui coulaient, je ne savais pas pourquoi. Et, et en fait, je pleurais de joie, je pense. Je pleurais de joie et de me dire, mais waouh, mais je fais un truc. Mais euh, j'ai une chance incroyable, en fait, de, de faire ça, de vivre ça. Et du coup, euh, je pleurais euh, à chaud de larmes. J'ai marché comme ça, j'ai marché, j'ai marché. Et, et après, ça s'est calmé et je me suis sentie bien. Et en fait, quand je marche, je me sens vraiment bien. Euh, je me sens calme. Et euh, j'ai pas beaucoup de pensées qui viennent euh, perturber euh, mon esprit, on va dire. Donc c'est très agréable en fait de marcher, de, de ralentir en fait. Je pense que c'est le fait de ralentir et d'avoir un rythme. Euh, It is true. This morning, um, you know, when I just thought it's it's time to just go on my own. Um, later this day, I met uh, a beautiful guy from Australia, and uh, we we talked the day before. And uh, uh, that moment was like you know this 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 inner journey. Uh, it's a package, and you don't know what is what is in the box, uh, but you know it's there. And uh, I have no idea what will come out of this box. But this morning, uh, I, I've, I felt like it's getting unwrapped. So, so maybe it's part of this box that uh, is more obvious right now. And then, um, well, it, it, it wasn't very nice, but um, it was interesting. And then uh, it was good to, to have the time and, and, and just to think about it. I've really watched, I've watched and observed myself going from, I don't like walking, you know, like five kilometers would be a huge long distance for me, to now put the effort in, put the intention in to be able to walk 20, 30 kilometers and be okay. And I've watched myself grow and be able to do that. And so if I can change my mind and body from a couch potato to a long distance walker, then I, can, I know it's possible. And then I want to then take that and be able to help other people realize what they feel might be impossible for them, but is their dream. I'm doing something myself so that I can then help other people do something similar. Chaque jour est différent, chaque jour il se passe un truc. Et du coup, comme on vit les choses beaucoup plus fort, puisqu'on est quand même assez... On est juste avec notre sac, on est tout seul, on est dehors, donc on est un peu fragile. 
Et donc tout ce qui se passe, la moindre petite chose, c'est c'est énorme. Là, par exemple, le soleil, après la pluie, comme je te racontais aussi, euh, j'ai marché en écoutant de la musique, ce que je fais jamais. Et du coup, là, j'ai pu, euh, euh, comment dire, vivre des émotions, mais de manière plus créative et plus... Euh, moins dans les larmes, mais plus dans le corps et, et effectivement de me mettre à danser alors que je n'avais pas du tout réfléchi ça. Mais c'est juste que tout d'un coup, ben voilà, c'est ça qui est venu et, euh, et en fait c'était hyper agréable euh, ouais, de sortir un peu du rail parce que quand tu marches, tu marches tout droit, tu marches, voilà, tu suis les signes, alors c'est jaune, c'est bleu, tu suis. Et là, quand tu te mets à danser, eh ben, tu vas plus tout droit, tu fais comme ça, comme ça, tu retournes en arrière, tu te tournes sur toi-même, puis tu continues à marcher. Et du coup, c'est. Euh... Et du coup, ben, ça. Voilà, il y a quelque chose qui berce à l'intérieur et... et qui sort du, du rail. Todo directo. <rire> Why people do Camino, which came up recently, nobody knows. They, there's the urge to do it. Somebody will hear about the Camino. It'll be some passing thing. And it will go into their brain like fish hooks and it'll just sit there and just nag at them and nag at them. And they'll keep meeting people or they'll see something on television or they'll find a book in a bookshop or they'll see a scallop shell somewhere and it'll be in their hometown 2,000 miles away from here. And it will just nag and nag and nag until they have to go. And, and I don't care if they're agnostic, atheists, heretics or whatever. As far as I'm concerned, God calls and I, I don't think anybody has any choice they have to come and uh, here they are <laughs> Ah oui, j'ai été baptisée dans le Jourdain. Je fréquente un groupe de gens qui organisent des pèlerinages. Alors j'ai fait le dernier pèlerinage, euh, je l'ai terminé l'année dernière, j'ai fait sur les pas de Saint-Paul. Saint-Paul est parti de Palestine, il a traversé la Grèce, il a traversé toute la Turquie, j'ai fait ça aussi, traversé toute la Turquie. Et l'année dernière, euh, le pèlerinage s'est terminé, on l'a fait en trois ans, hein. l'année dernière, le pèlerinage s'est terminé en Sicile et à Rome. Ça, j'ai trouvé ça formidable parce que j'étais avec des gens qui ont une foi extraordinaire. Moi, j'ai une foi petite, tu vois, une foi euh, simple, tu vois, très simple. Il ne faut pas trop me poser de questions. Je crois en Dieu <rire> et au bienfait de la Vierge. Je fais ça parce que je dois beaucoup de choses à mon ange gardien. Je veux dire ça comme ça. Hein. Euh, J'ai été abandonnée et recueillie. Donc je remercie. C'est pour remercier Dieu. C'est pas Saint Jacques, c'est Dieu et la Vierge Marie de ce qu'ils ont fait pour moi. But if some managed to find their way to the light, others had plenty of reasons to doubt. Yeah, there's just been a lot of trauma in my life. I lost my oldest son, uh, Daniel, to cancer. 
and uh, our whole family's had a hard time with that. Well, my wife passed last year, like I said, and sorry. And she was my my mo sorry. <laughs> my moral compass in life and I lost my way I drank a little too much I gained too much weight and I wasn't taking care of myself and and so I knew I needed a change many emotions many 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 emotions many uh, pictures from here and cannot sleep in the night. Story from Gisela, uh, his son is uh, hmm. yeah. Yeah. In, the, in the last year. Hopefully I'll have peace of mind and uh, experience joy in life again and um, be able to be strong for my family again. I mean, our spiritual life is something that many of us ignore, but it's important to be able to feed your soul. I think the, the thing that has surprised me the most was the relationships. I find that people are open, and most people have a, have a, a reason for walking this, and, and it really can bring people together very, very quickly. I make the pictures book and the stamps from the Camino of Santiago and when finish I give this book him. Nice. It was a beautiful story, sad, but there are a lot of sad sur on the chemin. Les people carry a lot of things. That's not the word you would expect after hearing those stories. But what the pilgrims have taught me is that it doesn't matter what life throws at you. You always have a choice. You're the one responsible for taking the next step, regardless of how steep of a climb it is. carry our burden in a physical and a metaphorical form from our countries from below the hill from from wherever and the stone is the representation of that when you reach the uh, cruise the the ferro point that's where you leave your burden because you were carrying this uh, stone all the way in your backpack in you
I mean, extraordinary things happen in life, and um, and people can say, oh, well, it's a coincidence, and that happened, it's a coincidence, and uh, mathematicians and logicians will, will tell you and prove to you what a coincidence it was. But on the Camino, I think possibly because you're no longer in your in your world where you don't notice anything, you notice coincidences. I mean, look at this. We come into this place, I mean, Puente La Reina, Refugio Apostol, and uh, we're sitting here in, in a documentary. I mean, how on earth did that? I got a backpack, I quit my job, I will go to the Camino in six weeks. Then I decided, like, one week ago or something, to study medicine. I remember uh, a story happened when I was 14 in Malta that there was a man nearly killed and I helped him during first aid and I started recognizing that I'm very good at first aid so somebody told me at one time on the Camino, you would cry. It was the way from Pamplona to Pronto de la Arena. I cried the whole way. So many things happen during the day. And, yeah. uh, and it's, it's what, yeah. well. When you will I, when cry, I, when you're went, close now. You will cry over the next couple of days, and it's will, good, will, it's will, good. Will, you know, <laughs> you can't go on. I can't go on past the Grogne. People to start at Saint Jean is if they don't get the ones that get injured, if they don't get repaired, they get so bad that La Grogne, some of them go home. I'm going to take the bus to Roncesvalles, and then I then I'll meet the pilgrims coming over the mountain and walk down with them for three days to Pamplona. I've never done it, so that'd be exciting. Nice and hilly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I'll do. And then I'll see how that works. If I get a lot of first aid that first three days, then I'll just keep repeating it because more and more pilgrims as the season goes along will come. And, uh, and if it's not many, then I'll just carry on walking and I'll end up standing right here saying to myself, I'll get the bus from La Grande back to you. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't walk on. To walk on would be for me and it's, I'm here for okay. pilgrims. Yeah. But I'll walk on now to La Grande. To La Grande. Saying goodbyes in the Camino is not easy, as you never really know when it will be the last time you see someone disappearing in the distance. It's impossible not to wonder. Michael only had 18 days and wouldn't be able to reach Santiago, but I do hope he had enough time to complete his own journey. Mona told me it was her last time doing the Camino, but I'm not quite sure I believe her. Mon fils, il vient la moto de France, me rejoindra et c'était là pour marcher deux jours. I never saw Miriam again after 24 hours, but she was determined to go all the way to Finister to see the ocean. As for David, with the right timing you might still find him on the Camino. He walks slowly, so that injured pilgrims can overtake him. To those I didn't have a chance to say goodbye, I'd say Kia Kaha, amigos. That's a mix between the Maori and Portuguese languages. It means stay strong, friends. Stay strong. Okay. Kia Kaha, amigos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah because multi well, national language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. See you. Kia amigos. <laughs> New Zealand. <laughs> 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 
but even with them gone, some thoughts never left. Durante la tua vita incontri delle persone, poi ti lasciano. Quando sei piccolo, eh, c'è tuo padre, tua madre, tua nonna, poi muore la nonna, arrivano gli amici, poi magari muore un amico, una sorella, però incontri l'amore, poi c'hai i figli e poi sarai te, a tuo tempo sarai te che lascerai del cammino. Non è importante Santiago, è importante il cammino, è lui importante, è proprio il cammino la cosa più importante. Ce chemin, il, il est comme un aimant en fait. Je ne sais pas pourquoi je suis venue là en fait. C'est comme, il fallait que j'aille sur ce chemin. Et je pense que du coup, je me sens quand même plus forte. Euh, plus forte parce que je, je réalise quand même, quand je suis arrivée à Saint-Jean-Pied-de-Port, et je me suis dit que c'était mon premier but. Mon premier but, c'était faire le Puy-en-Velay Saint-Jean-Pied-de-Port. Et après, j'ai pensé que j'allais aller plus loin. Mais quand je suis arrivée à Saint-Jean, je me suis dit, tu l'as fait. <rire> tu l'as fait, meuf, tu l'as fait. Ça fait... 700, 750 bornes, j'en sais rien, c'est pas grave, c'est pas ça qui compte, mais, euh... mais du coup j'avais les larmes aux yeux parce que je me disais bah, ton premier euh, objectif c'était ça et, et là tu entres dans Saint-Jean-Pied-de-Port et puis tu as vécu tout ça, tu as dormi dehors, j'ai dormi dehors toute seule, dans des... j'aurais jamais cru que j'aurais pu le faire sans avoir peur et, euh... et j'ai aimé être toute seule dans la nature et, euh... et je suis contente de qui je suis. And we probably wouldn't spend as much time together at home. Yeah, there you go. There's a chance to spend more time together with your partner or wife or than you would in normal circumstances where you go off to work all day and come home at night. We're actually getting a chance now to experience things mm. throughout the day together. We still have our time, you know, our spaces apart, but mm. yeah. So you get yeah. that, that, that benefit, don't you? Yeah. That's good. <laughs> Now I get bonus points for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> In the uh, story of the Good Samaritan, Yeshua, everyone knows that story, Yeshua finishes it by saying, then go ye and do likewise. It's Luke 10.37. And I see my mission, I'm one of those pesky Christians, I see my mission as then go ye and do likewise. So is, oh, it sounds really pretentious, isn't it? It's, I try, I drink a lot of Rioja, I, mean, I like all that. And, crack silly jokes and so on, but I try to, if I get the feeling of turn left or stop here or do this, then I'll do that. And I try to be the hands and voice of something through me rather than me. And I know that sounds pretentious because I know exactly what I really like. I'm not that good a person, but um, there's need and, and I answer it. I'm not very good at it. I, it's simple first aid. I just patch people up. I've taken a few people to doctors. I've saved one life, which I suppose is worth the 13 years. Um, how do I feel? I love it. I love it. I love helping people. I just love it. Thing is, at the core of everything, everything, whether, it, whether you're a parent or you're a school teacher or you're doing this sort of, the core of everything is love. It might not be called love, but it's love. That's the core of everything. That's behind, that's the energy behind everything. It's love. So. <laughs> I cannot speak for other pilgrims, but the closer I got to Santiago, the farther away I felt from the Camino. Butterflies and bees love them. That's got, have a packet of seeds. 
and a packet of seeds for you. My journey didn't start when I left home or when I arrived to Saint-Jean. As simple as it sounds, I only truly felt part of the Camino when I first shared a piece of bread with a fellow pilgrim. It was me and, and the two other guys. And, and from this very moment, everything was like, oh, we're having breakfast together. Yeah, no yeah, question. yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, everyone was helping each other. We were talking. It was just, just an atmosphere. Yeah. It was perfect. Yeah. And the next moment, you you know that you, you that you might see these guys never again, or maybe maybe at the end of you. And although the same path will lead to completely different lives, they all had a reason for doing this walk. I met people who did the Camino to find themselves. I met people who did the Camino to find peace for others. I met those who walked to grieve and those who walked to be fulfilled. I saw pilgrims double my age, bursting into tears. And I saw pilgrims double their age, completely reinventing themselves. But in the end, I'm glad I didn't walk alone. Eu disse para ele várias vezes, um dia a gente vai fazer o caminho junto. Então, para mim foi um momento único. Personally, I just want to drift westward. You know, just drift westward. They walk for freedom. The, the great philosopher Socrates was always walking when he was talking with people and debating with them. They walk for courage. Je prie pour que tout le monde fasse un bon chemin dans la vie. They walk for spirituality. Everything happens for a reason. They walk for kindness. Uh, it's a beautiful experience. They walk for the unknown. Aren't we all just taking a long walk? They walk for a rendezvous. Bon, là, c'est un peu personnel, hein, parce que j'ai l'impression que j'ai les larmes aux yeux qui pourraient arriver. Hein. And they walk for sharing. And, and we should be helping each other along the way. They walk too. I have no idea. I love walking all my life. And um, it's the easiest way I can, can do. Why am I walking? <laughs> why am I, Alex, why am I walking? You're not, you are, you're very good. <laughs> Buen Camino, we go Santiago. El Camino, we walk all the way. On Camino, we all have a story. Seeking truth, living life, feeling pain. Facing fear, finding strength.
Buen camino we go Santiago El camino we walk all the way On camino we all have a story Seeking truth, living life, feeling pain Facing fear, finding strength, come what may